So I'm teaching these kids and I'm teaching front handsprings. I got some barrels and stuff on the ground. They're front handspringing over the barrels, but I'm really just spotting also front handsprings. And I'm spotting the wrist, the back, and I'm putting the, the students on their feet and everything's going great. They're successful. They're making front handsprings. I'm happy. Students are happy. Things are good. And then my boss comes over to me and she says, what could you do differently? I'm like, I don't know. She's doing a front handspring. She's landing on her feet. It's pretty good to me. She says, well, where should they, their eyes be looking? Where should they be looking? It's always one of those kind of trick questions where you don't really know at what part of the skill they're talking about and and you always know that like you're just gonna get it wrong. When they're standing, they're gonna be looking forwards maybe, slightly down. I, I don't know what the answer is, but okay, I'm just gonna say something. I'm like, okay, they should be looking forwards. And she goes, well, they should actually be looking at their hands. If they look for their hands the entire time and keep watching their hands, their head will stay back, just keep watching their hands. So then I go to trampoline. I'm spotting backflips and I'm doing the spot technique where you grab the wrist and you flip them and you hold them and whatever, everything's going great. Got all these you know, students doing backflips on trampoline, I'm spotting them. Boss comes over and she says, what could you do differently? I don't know what I could do differently. I could probably turn my phone off so it stops beeping. That's what I could do differently. What could you do differently? Now, now, at this point, I know I'm just gonna get schooled in something. Like, I have no idea what I could do differently, and you're probably gonna come up with something that's way smarter and better than what I could come up with. She's like, well, if they're doing a backflip and you're holding one arm up and you're spotting with that arm, why not have them hold both arms up so that it's like a backflip? So they have both arms up going into their backflip. Yeah, okay, genius. Thank you, thank you. That started getting me thinking, why is it that I'm not seeing things the way that other people are seeing things? What am I missing in my observation? And so I started thinking about observation. What is true observation? And that's kind of what started changing my perspective in this whole concept of building relationships and communicating with people is it's really got to start with what do I see? And that's observation. This is episode six of the gymnastics experience. I'm Raleigh Carter and we're talking about observation. So, what are observations, right? I mean, we've used the word observation, you've heard it before, but what really is an observation? It's just the stuff you take in, it's the information you gather, whether it be visually or, you know, sense, touch, smells, it's just, it's just information. When it comes to communication, building relationships with people, observations are the very beginning, the very first step to the whole entire foundation, that process. You're not placing value on the information, you're just taking in information. You wanna be very unbiased in your observations. You don't wanna have uh, any sort of preconceived idea of an observation. You just wanna walk in and be like, what am I observing? I remember as a kid, oftentimes, and you may have done this too, is you, know, you do something that you think is correct or have the right intent but the adult or the parent may not have an observation, make an observation of what you're doing and they just jump to a conclusion. And they're like, you're wrong. And you're like, but I wasn't wrong. I was trying to do this because they didn't observe the situation fully. And then I started seeing myself do that to other people too. I jumped to conclusions before making an observation. I thought that I had the answer. I thought that I knew what was going on, but I didn't actually make an observation. When you become an observer, when you learn how to observe first, what you actually do is build an environment of trust because by making observations, you're actually creating an environment where people are building trust and they're saying, you know what, you know, Raleigh's going to make an observation of me and before he jumps to a conclusion. So they're more willing to try things out, trial and error, because they know that I'm gonna have a better context when we have a conversation. Creativity is all about basically trial and error, right? And learning, growing, success is all about failure. And so if we don't give people an environment in which they can fail, then they're not gonna really push themselves. If you're not a person who likes to observe and you just jump to a conclusion before you've even taken the observation of the process, then you're not really fostering an environment where people can learn because they're gonna be afraid of failing because they're, all they're gonna have inside their head is you're gonna jump to this conclusion without observing the entire situation. Now my observations used to be very focused. I used to only see very limited things. But as I had my boss come over to me and kind of make these bigger observations, you know, it really made me think, wow, what am I missing in my observations? And so I started thinking about observation a lot differently. And I started approaching my day going, you know, okay, what are all the things that I can observe? And I started observing lots of just random silly things like, does that person cross their arms? Do they make eye contact? Are they paying attention to me when I'm talking? When it comes to observations in the gymnastics world, the, the main things that you're wanting to observe, the key points are, do your students listen or do they not listen? 
do they have gross motor skill ability or do they have fine-tuned motor skill ability? Can they point their toes and flex their feet? Can they bend their legs and straighten their legs? You're just observing the information. You don't have to come to any conclusion. You're observing can your students stand in line? Do they give you eye contact when you talk to them? You want to know that if you're talking, which students are looking at you and which ones are not. Because the ones that are not looking at you, you might want to redirect in some way. But before you even do that, you gotta make an observation, even ask the other question of, well, why aren't they looking at you? Maybe there's something going on that's distracting them. Maybe they're actually not watching you for a good reason. When you coach and you teach people and then you walk away, do they maintain the quality or does the quality go down when you're not there? That's just an observation. It doesn't have to be a good or bad thing. It's just an observation. Making observations of how do people treat you? How do you treat other people? How do they react when you say certain things? How do you react when people say things to you? You're asking a student to do something and say they're bending their legs in cartwheels. And so you're making an observation. They have bent legs in cartwheels. Well, before you even do anything, you just got to take in that information. They got bent legs and cartwheels. Before you even go to going, let's straighten those legs. Maybe they don't know how to straighten their legs. Maybe they've never been told to straighten their legs. Maybe there hasn't been an expectation set. So the observation is just simply, well, do they know they should straighten their legs? Do they know that they have bent legs? Those are just observations. What you're going to do with those observations comes into the next video that we're going to talk, which is about how to place value on those things. Really understanding of what to even look for is the first step of any form of communication. I thought I saw the entire process in the front handspring. Somebody came over and they observed even more than what I saw. I thought I had the backflips going on with the trampoline doing the back tucks and somebody came in and said, hey, you need to add this piece. They looked at the bigger picture and they had a better viewpoint for their observation. And that's what I really took away with that is going, man, I'm really too focused and I'm not observing everything. I'm just observing what I want to observe. And so with observation, it comes down to your ability to take in all the pieces, all the bits of information, and then putting them out on the board and basically saying, okay, now what am I gonna do with them? And so observation. Very key, it's the foundation of communication, it's the foundation of building relationships, is making observation. And that's what we're just talking about in this video is observations. In the next video we're going to be talking about assessment and how to place value on your observations. Remember to subscribe so you can keep track of what's going on. I've got a trail to conquer.